Hello again, and welcome to another episode of Advanced Minecraft. I've gotten a lot of comments about an old alarm tutorial that I did before I started Advanced Minecraft, and uh, I didn't have any sound, so I tried to explain it all using signs, and really it wasn't good enough. Uh, people have been confused, they had trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you step by step how to build a uh, alarm. Now before I do, I want to preface this with, although alarms are pretty sweet, and they're kind of a cool accomplishment, they really don't have much of a practical use in Minecraft, and the reason, of course, is that you can hear every mob except the creeper, so you know when they're coming, uh, or when they're out there waiting for you, and uh, in the case of the creeper, you simply aren't going to get enough of a success rate with your alarm system, because anything can walk on there and trigger it, whether or not the creeper is there. It could be a chicken, could be a cow, and you're going to say, oh, there's a cow and a chicken out there, and you walk outside and you're surrounded by creepers, so it's not going to help you. Uh, the one instance I thought of that might be practical for this uh, alarm system is if you're trying to farm a dungeon and, uh, that spawns creeps and, and you've got the place you know set up and you just need to know when your dinner is ready uh, and it hits the button causing the lights in there to go on and off. Um, so I'm going to explain to you step by step what you need to do. And uh, your first por part really it breaks down into a bunch of simple parts. First part is this platform. Now it can be made of wood or stone because you're interested in a creature touching it, so uh, stone will activate correctly. And essentially when you step on the platform, uh, it provides power to the rock below it and anything immediately to the side. So if you have redstone there, it will also power that. Um, and that powers our chain down there. Now I'm going to hide it there so nothing can get in there and terrorize it. You can't see what's going on. So in multiplayer mode, if you've got a platform that does something, uh, you can hide it like that and people won't know if it opens the door or sets off an alarm or what. So we're going to go in here. Now here's my three blinking lights. Uh, because I stepped on the plate, they're active. Uh, normally they'll just simply be in the off mode, but I'll show you why and uh, how to do all of this. Um, so here's where the platform is. It's right there. You'll notice the wire here is pointing straight. That's because I put a stone block above it. I don't know why, but it, trust me, it does work. You push something there, it'll light up. Now, uh, in fact, let me go and show you this little trick uh, for testing your apparatus. Um, you can even throw something like a block on top of it and it'll press uh, for wood. Uh, this won't work for stone. Uh, and that'll let you know what it looks like out there. Uh, you'll see how it's now receiving power. Okay, that power is then coming into our control switch. And this part I'm going to break apart and show you step by step how to build it because this is the most confusing part of the apparatus. Okay. Uh, in fact, it's so confusing I'll do it last there. Uh, the second part that you'll need is a rotating five clock. Now, um, I've shown you guys in more previous video how to build your own rotating five clock. Um, so I'm going to save the time and trouble and just say, look, I built one. Uh, power goes into one, out, in, out, in, out, around in a circle. When you have five of them, they get confused as to who has power and they rotate. What you want from that is you want one line to exit into a, a block that neither that does not power back into the loop, simply receives power, and that'll blink forever. Blink, blink, blink. Um, now currently this line here leads up to the uh, stairs here up behind my wall. And this is what's powering those three torches and causing them to blink. Um, so, how do they turn off? Well, here is how. The control switch. What you need for the control switch is two torches, uh, redstone torches, and two blocks, and then a block and a button. Now, uh, to make a button, you need to uh, smelt some cobblestone into regular stone again, go to a furnace there, and build two one on top of the other. Little tiny button and a button generates temporary surge of power click while it's down into the thing without anyone touching it. That'll be your reset button. See? Power's next to it. Now what we've got here is this here is from our plate and that's going to go into the back of a block. That's going to be torch A. Okay, torch A will power anything next to it. Uh, in, fr uh, in front of it, like that. So when torch A does not receive power it's on. When it receives power, it's off. And if that's not the case, go ahead and switch the front because you're going to want this one to be off when the switch is stepped on, when the uh, platform is stepped on. Um, so for now, it's on. Now what that's going to do is that's going to send power first 
to the uh, link to go upstairs that also connects to your five clock. Now you'll notice it becomes solid red. That of course means that the torches upstairs will be powered off and you see that our alarm has turned off. Um, even though this is blinking, this guy here has the control. He's always on so he keeps control and that just doesn't matter. Now what he's also going to do is he's going to send power, I'll need this one, sorry. He's going to send power to torch B. When he's on, nothing is stepped on the switch, so blank. Torch B is off. Torch B, in turn, powers block A. Now that seems to make no sense originally, but what you'll see here is when torch A receives power, torch B uh, turns on and sends power back to A. But A is not turning on. It's going to, or it's, sorry, A is going to stay off, um, even if someone walks back off of the platform. Now it's no longer receiving power from the platform, but it's receiving power from torch B. So it'll stay off, and it'll allow this torch, which is blinking, to maintain control. I hope everyone understands that. There's really no better way for me to, pl to explain it. When, when someone steps on your platform, it's quick. It goes bam. Okay? that tiny surge of power comes through and turns this torch off. If you didn't have power coming into the torch from a permanent source, it would go back on right away and your lights would stop blinking. Which would be fine if you knew that your torches, if you were watching them and someone stepped on it, you'd say, oh, they just blinked. I know there's something outside. But if you're working on something, you look up, your torches are back off, you don't know that anything ever stepped there. So what you need to do is you need to have a permanent power source that'll stay on until you hit your reset button. Now the reset button will act like torch A has turned back on. Like that. Because it'll provide power to this. Even only temporarily. And watch what happens. You hit the button, temporary power goes in, and because something is still standing on my platform, it immediately reverted. Let me, again, platform is now blank, still blinking. What did I do wrong here? Uh, oh, of course. <laughs> Forgot to hook this guy back up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there. Okay. Someone stepped on the platform, stepped off it. Power is no longer coming into this from that, but it is from there. That guy has control. But when I hit the reset button, power is restored to this because it's turned off, or restored to there, turned off there. Bam. And now you're linked back to the plate. Now you'll notice my plate here has gone black. That's because the block that was on it has disintegrated, which is perfect timing. Uh, now you can see how it all works together. I hope this is clear enough. Uh, if it's not, I can try to explain it uh, again. Um, five clock here. Five clock is linked to an output source, which is always blinking. That output source competes for control with a torch that is li linked directly to your trigger and to a torch which it also powers, okay? Power to its own torch. That torch then, when someone steps here, blink, and then off, blink, has surrendered control to its uh, secondary power source, which is still powering it. Because it's lost control of its other line, that line is then blinking, which causes your torches there to blink. You hit the button to reset power to that torch, causing this one to take control again. And there you have it. That is going to uh, cause your torches to activate when something steps on it. And then they'll blink, letting you know that it's time to go collect your uh, meat or zombie brains or whatever have you. Uh, so let's see in action. I may take some damage here. Uh, actually, I've set this for peaceful because I had to run down into hell not held, but down into the, the volcano layer, a magma layer, to get more redstone, because I ran out with one left that I needed. Okay, let's see what goes here. Torches off, torches off, torches off. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. Yes, you are appearing now, you sneaky bastard. Getting a lot of lag. I don't know if you guys are gonna see this in the video, but it is jumping around like, like crazy. Okay, let's go and reset our button. Sneak. We got our torches, and 
and out there we have our dungeon, which should be making zombies for us. Um, not guaranteed that it will, uh, but it should. And when a zombie steps on the platform, it should trigger our... Oh, I hear you. go. The zombie is outside, it triggers the lights. Unfortunately, again, this technique not very useful because the zombie won't come near you unless the door's open. Um, but you could see how maybe you could combine that technique with something else like a pit or uh, you know a waterfall pit that causes the zombie to slowly drown and then these blinking lights will tell you, hey, there's a feather. In fact, uh, since if an item passes over a uh, uh, wooden platform, wooden uh, uh, trapdoor, the lights will go off as well. So if you can rig up a contraption to deliver you uh, pig meat or feathers, etc., then you can use that uh, to your advantage as well. Well, I hope this uh, has proved useful for you guys. Next week, uh, when I try to do another episode, we will have the glorious and much anticipated Halloween update. Uh, so I don't know if it'll be on Tuesday when I update, or I try to update on Tuesdays. Um, but, uh, rest assured that I will be delving into the new dimension, and I will be trying to find practical, useful applications for it, uh, to help you stay alive, uh, in the depths of Minecraft. And, uh, please, if you guys have anything that you would like to see, uh, before the, uh, update, after the update, anything that strikes your fancy, let me know. I would be more than happy to spend some time on it uh, and uh, help you guys play Minecraft. Uh, this is Dr. Zombie, and see you next time. Oh, die, zombie! Oh, he got me.